Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this game, Colot. Now as you know, um, this game is a horror game that is based off a tragic true story. Um, I do have the description down in the below. Um, and you can also find it in the click box towards the end of this video. And if you care to know more about the true tragic story, go ahead. It's called the Dyatlov Tragedy. Um, so yeah, the Colot is a pretty, <laughs> pretty interesting game uh, that has involved a lot of theories of the deaths of the hikers. So, um, I did play this game once before. It's just been a while, so I don't remember everything, and so I'll try to keep this short. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and start a new game. Uh, yeah, I didn't get very far anyway, so... 56 years ago, Russia, the northern Ural Mountains. A group of nine students of the Ural Polytechnic Institute embarked upon a difficult winter expedition to reach the Ototen Mountain. Their journey seemed to progress according to plan. However, on the seventh day of their trip, the weather conditions worsened. They lost their orientation and were forced to set up a camp on the slope of the mountain called Kolat Siakl. It was their last stop. Three weeks later in Yekaterinburg, when their families received no word of their success, the first rescue expeditions were sent. On February 25th, 1959, an abandoned encampment was found. The tent was torn down and covered with snow, with all the group's belongings left inside. Further examination revealed it was cut from inside out. The surrounding footprints indicated the crew had fled the tent. They were barefooted. This suggests a frantic escape, characteristic of people scared out of their wits. Two sets of prints led to a forested area down the slope. The rescue team found an improvised fireplace and two bodies. They were lying in but their underwear, with cuts and scratches to their limbs, suggesting they had tried to climb the tree in panic. What could terrify them so much? The next three bodies were found scattered a few hundred meters from the first discovery. One of them had suffered a fractured skull, this despite no evidence of a struggle. It took the spring thaw, two months later, to enable the rescue team to find the rest of the victims. The last four skiers were found buried in a thick layer of ice and snow. Their autopsies led to even more bizarre findings. All of the bodies had severe internal injuries caused by an undetermined force similar to that of a serious car accident. No external damage nor bruises were visible besides a tongue ripped from one victim's mouth and a strange orange skin color. Much speculation arose from these puzzling events. Such theories included attack from the local tribesmen from an avalanche or animals. Each theory, however, only served to create more questions. The truth behind this tragic course of events remains unexplained to this day. What really happened? Maybe the answer still waits to be discovered deep under the snow. Pretty tragic, right? I do also have a link to the website where I got my information from for my other videos. It will be in the description as well. Um, it's pretty intense stuff about their deaths and um, theories of how they died. Some involving like aliens and yetis and things like that. So it's it's really interesting. Like I've been like looking into it for like almost a whole month trying to figure out what could have happened to them. I can't I can't figure it out. I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, I do have I might I'm not quite sure yet, but I know I'm gonna I might have a third video coming out about their deaths and the theories of their deaths and maybe maybe you guys can help me figure it out <laughs> wow isn't this beautiful I think this is the village of this high because this was a very last civilization place obviously it doesn't look very civilized now but I 
I love the music. So it has been a long time since I've played this. It's been a couple months, and I only played it one time. So bear with me if I forget some things. <laughs> I can sprint. I forgot I can sprint. So the event that occurred is probably 1959. Nine students' bodies, and they were all at least at the age of 20. One of them was like 32, and that was uh, Zolotayev. Um, he was like 30, yeah, 32, 35. So they were all really young. It's, it's kind of sad. There was one actual thing that they didn't mention though in that um, intro was one of them did have their eyes pulled uh, pulled out or missing, um, but two of the victims, the one that lost its tongue, and Zolotayev, who was one of the victims, they both lost their eyes. They didn't have any eyes. And Dubinina, who was the one that lost her tongue, didn't have a tongue. But their injuries were pretty... pretty incredible. I hope I'm going the right way. Yeah, I love the graphics in this game. The lighting, the trees, the snow. It actually feels like, like I'm getting chills. <laughs> like this game is messing with my mind. My mind thinks I'm outside in the snow. And the story of Kola, this is actually the game that I actually heard the, the story from. Like, at first I thought it was just a game, the story wasn't real, but I did more research, and... Oh. Glowy footy prints. Let's see that. Are you coming to me? Um, yes. Um, they actually did reopen the case last year, in fact. Um, they actually found new evidence that supports something that they're speculating that has involved the government, but we don't know yet. Um, I might I might mention that too, but apparently... Um, like in my, in my third video, I might mention that they found a secret secret documents saying that um, the investigation started on the 6th of February when actually the investigation started on the 24th. Whoa! Got all black and white. Whoa! I forgot about that part. In the end, the only thing I saw was a flash. An insufferable burning light, the pain ripping apart my body. I felt it tearing out of my soul. After a while, I was nobody, nothing. The light went out and I vanished into overwhelming darkness. I welcomed the end with delight. That is Sean Bean's voice. Awesome actor and narrator for this game. I like Sean Bean. Uh, oh. There's a tent out here. I have to go inside. Don't say that. <laughs> I don't like things behind me. A 
Have you ever tried to hold on to your humanity? Yes. When others convince you of being no more than a subject, an object, which they can bend to their will. When they told you that you were a monster who deserved punishment. When you could really not remember your sins. When they took away your loved ones, leaving you to rot in the dark. More glowy footy prints. eerie. Those stones make everything so eerie. Press F for survival info. Oh! I have a flashlight. Um, F is for flashlight, not survival info. It lied! Okay, M is map. So this is the map. We are here at the camp. And all these little white lines... Oh, are paths. Yeah. I gotta go through every single one of those. This game is very... It's not long, but it seems long because all these paths. And you can get lost really easily. This is why you have a compass. Because it's... It can get confusing for those who, like, don't know. <laughs> How to read a compass. Hopefully you can read a compass. And all these coordinates that you see here, there's little paper pieces that you find, like journal, I think they're journal pages, and those are coordinates to find the pages. And if you don't know where you are, there's coordinates sometimes on the rocks. Or they're coordinates for paper, I, for I forget which. Should I start here in the middle? I don't even know why we even have a flashlight. I never even... Last time I played this, I didn't even use the flashlight. I didn't even know I had a flashlight. <laughs> it's a full moon tonight. Dun dun dun. Okay. Okay, you hear that? The sound of a paper rattling in the wind? That's what you were looking for. So you want to listen to those pages. I set out the moment I heard about the incident. I was in the area, so I reported to the unit myself to be automatically assigned to the case. I arrived at Vichai on February the 19th, a couple of days before the Institute's rescue group. While waiting for them, I started asking around to see if anyone from among the locals knew anything about the incident. One of them said he had a hunting cabin in the search region and knew the area very well. I decided to use him as a guide. When the rescue team had finally arrived, I explained to them what the unit's role was in this mission and that all discoveries or observations should be brought to my attention before anyone else's. We established priorities, checked the equipment, and set off right away. It was not until February the 26th we found the tent that I believe belonged to the students. Initial findings show that the people in the tent cut its side wall and for some reason tried to escape from it in panic. The tracks in the snow led to a forest a kilometer and a half away. But the trail went cold after 500 meters and we had to carefully search the entire area. This was not a place of any average incident. We had shivers crawling all over our bodies because of the atmosphere surrounding us. I was convinced that something more than just an accident had occurred here. I had the feeling we were dealing with something unnatural. Hmm. Interesting. Huh? Oh man. I think I'm supposed to run here. Run, 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 run! Whoa! And there's a ghostly figure running. Whoa, that's so weird. 
Last time I saw this person, they went the other way. Wait for me! Oh, I can't catch up. They're gonna keep running? Oh, it faded away. Where did it go? <laughs> I'm not making this game very scary. <laughs> All right, so All right, I need to go back here. Can I decide which way I want to go? I'm guessing that fireball we saw in the sky it fell because there was something in the the website that I read when I was studying this case. They claimed to have seen fireballs in the sky the night the the night before they died, and they don't know what the fireballs are, what they can represent, but they were just balls of glowing red light that looked fiery, I guess. And multiple witnesses have also seen these fireballs, and they've given the name fireballs. Like I said, that website that I have in the description, that's a really good website to learn about this, this incident. I really liked it. Okay, I'm going to go... Let's see, I'm, I'm here, I think. I'm going to take this path. I think I'm going to go try and head towards the tower there. Yeah, I'm just gonna just go this way. Why not? I'm already over here. There's a glowing mountain over there. It's so cold. You know, I'm not really good friends with the snow. I don't like driving in snow. I don't mind playing in it, but driving in it, mm mm. Um, the only time I like the snow is Christmas time. That's it. And then Christmas, and then the snow can go bye bye after Christmas. Oh, there's a bridge there. <gasps> I hear paper. Paper. Oh, more coordinates. Bet yet papers up there. Let's see. Can I get there from over here? Oh. Well, hello there, skull. And more skulls. Very creep me cre creep me. Creepy atmosphere. music doesn't make it any better. I'm playing this at like 3 a.m. What a great time to play. What was that? I was creaking of the trees. What a great time to play a scary game at 3 a.m. that they mesh the skulls in with the rock though. Paper! Now did we are sitting in although sitting might not be the right word because we are running around trying to finish up packing anything else we could need. Uh, food cans, tools, essentially whatever we get our hands on. We want to be sure that we took everything we could possibly need. We're running out of time. Damn it, where did I put my belt? I'm sure we forgot about something. We're almost ready. We lost the knife. We're counting the money. We're leaving the room in a complete mess. So, we made it to the train station. We're singing all the songs we know and making up new ones as well. Everyone is so excited. Finally, at around 3am, we go to bed. 
I wonder, what is awaiting us when we get there? What will we see? How far will we make it? I hear the rest of the group breathing peacefully, and it's snowing outside. Now, I know there are two females in this game. Uh, Dubinina and Komogorova. And I think that's either Dubinina or Komogorova's journal. If it's even part of the journal. I know they had a journal, but I think maybe that's just part of the game. I don't know. But there were definitely two women in the group. Oh, right. I still hear paper! Over there. Oh. Can I... Can I jump? Oh, I guess I can't jump. Can I run over? Yeah! Oh! Okay. Severisk is a closed city in Tomsk Oblast, Russia. Located 15 kilometers, 9.3 miles, northwest of Tomsk on the right bank of the Tom River and is the hands of Rosatom, the Federal Atomic Energy Agency. Founded in 1949, it was known as Paitipochtovi, I'm not very good with Russian names, sorry, in the 5th Postal. Town status was granted to it in 1956. It come from comprises several nuclear reactors and chemical plants for separation, enrichment, and processing of uranium and plutonium. The headquarters of the Russian Research Unit for Natural Phenomena until 1991 called the Soviet Research Unit. The unit's activities concern research on occurring natural disasters in Russia. Maybe that's one of the theories? I think that maybe there were some kind of like nuclear re nuclear test site that they weren't supposed to be on. I think I can go this way. Yeah. Boop. Down. Alright. I'm going to try get through the storm. Yeah, see I don't even need the flashlight. <laughs> oh. Okay, it went from really stormy to calm. <laughs> All those creepy sounds. So nice, but not so nice. Oh, a cave. Ooh. Wow, it's weird not to say snow. A bit of green in this place. Nope, there's the red tower. Am. You're slipping slowly into the abyss, and there is no one to give you a hand. And at the bottom, I am the only one waiting for you. Well, gee, thanks. I'm always losing my mind. It's normal for me. Do, 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 do. Going up this hill. I don't know what's on the other side. Woo! And it got windy. Windy? Not windy. Windy? Not windy. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna climb this mountain over here. Oh, oh my gosh. Now it got darker. I guess this is when you would normally use a flashlight, but I can still see, so... I apologize if you guys can't see, but... 
I'm kind of scared to use a flashlight. <laughs> Only me, right? What are those? Tiki heads? I forget what they're called. And I also forget what those are for. Some tribal statues, I think. <gasps> paper! I hear more paper. Where is the paper? Paper, 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 paper. There's the paper! Next to a walkie-talkie and a sleeping bag. Let's see. Mysterious life... Let's say lights above the Svobodny Cosmodrome. Mysterious events in the skies were noted during the night of 4 to 5th July. Witnesses testified they had seen a bright orange sphere which had crossed the sky above the city several times moving chaotically and immediately changing its direction of flight. Finally, it stopped and disappeared. Major Gierka, an aviation professional, confirms, It is impossible for any flying object we know to move like that. The military and cosmodromes personnel answered our questions in a short and firm way by distancing themselves to the event informing there was no activity in that area as well as there were no tests performed interesting you know a long time ago about ten years ago I saw an orange light in the sky don't call me crazy cuz you know I already am but I know what I saw and uh... it was Halloween night and me and my friends were kinda chilling out and we look up in the sky and we see this orange light just going back and forth and it wasn't a helicopter because after a while it like flew over us and it stopped again and then like slowly like started to get smaller and smaller back into space ooh hi there's someone over there and I hear a church oh oh hi it's the orange mist of death. But yeah, that was an interesting phenomenon for me on Halloween night. What's he staring at? Just like looking at that like hill or rock or something. What are you looking at? Oh. I think I popped him. <laughs> Only I would get up that close and touch a ghost. <laughs> Only me. Okay, okay, there's no snow. I forget if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm gonna guess it's a bad thing. There's a reason why it stopped snowing. Shadow guys, creepy shadow guys, and they leave footy prints too. Oh, he just disappeared. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I don't know if he's still there or. I oh yep, he's still there. He's still there. I'm gonna go this way. I'm just gonna just casually like run. I have to like stop and run, stop and run because this guy can't can't run very well. I'm gonna go this way, I think. Nope, can't go that way. <laughs> oh, he's following me. I'm just gonna just run this way, dude. Just just ignore me. I don't want to look behind me, but I have to. Oh, he's still coming. Okay, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back. Don't touch me. Just don't even look at me. Oh, I got, I got shivers. Oh my gosh, there's another one. It's gonna get me. My character's like running out of breath. Come on, catch your breath. Run, 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 run. 
Run! <laughs> oh. It's like it can't find me, but it knows I'm here. It can definitely sense me. Otherwise, it wouldn't have walked that far. Oh, that was close. I really hate those things. I hate it. I don't like running from something I cannot see. Like, freaking Outlast, man. Gosh, dang, I hated looking back in Outlast. Oh my gosh, there's another one. Okay. Uh, don't look back. Whenever you play games like this, never, ever, 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 ever look back. It's just better if you don't know they're following you. Okay, can I... Woo! What was that? Okay, I hear paper. Where is it? Where is the paper? It's probably up there. What is it? That is a wolf. Can I go through here? <gasps> I can go through here. I bet this takes me to the paper. Please take me to the paper. Paper, 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 paper. Okay, I hear it. It's definitely up there some more. There's the creepy church. But the fog is gone. Oh. It's the tribal statues again. Let's see. The Soviet Research Unit for Natural Phenomena regarding the occurrence of anomaly 0 to OH-91. The first incidents took place in 1950-1953 in the area of, Iar of Igarka by the construction of the Transpolar Main Line. The works were halt halted and the incidents classified. Any witnesses were ordered to be eliminated. Ugh. On October 17, 1950, according to witness evidence, at the same altitude as Camp 503 to the west of Vigarka City, an emanation of unknown force and source occurred and caused instant death of 42 workers. The bodies literally evaporated and only shadows were left. As the witnesses testified, the incident was sudden and short. The next incident took place three years later, on March 14, 1953. Then, also in the above-mentioned camp, a solidification effect occurred. The bodies of 12 workers just froze. After autopsy, they were declared dead. After autopsy, the bodies are still lying intact in Section 12 of the Severisk Research Complex. Interesting. I don't know if these are actual facts or just facts in the story, but it's interesting. Hey, I'm stuck. Oh my gosh, I'm literally stuck. I cannot move. Move. Oh my gosh. Not exactly where I want to get stuck. Well, that's a bummer. Wow, what a really creepy view. Well, since I'm stuck, I guess I might as well stop it here. Since it's 30 minutes into the video. So, anyway, if you like this video, like and subscribe. And also comment on ideas and theories if you'd like about this story of these nine hikers. And remember, if you're interested in watching the videos I made, they are in the description below. And thank you so much for watching. And take care of yourself. I know it's been a crazy year. Make sure you guys stay safe, okay? Thanks so much. Bye-bye.